Hey guys, so this is a direct continuation of the video I made for you guys in section 5.2. It's the same um, example with the mean amount of ice cream being still 20.7, standard deviation of 4.2. So the difference between this and what we did last week in 5.2 is in 5.2 you were given an x value that you converted into a z-score and found the area either to the right or to the left depending on what the question asked. These problems are actually going to do the exact opposite. Okay, so they're going to start with giving you an area somewhere in the problem, whether it's given to you as an area or a percent, and we have to convert it back um, into an x value. Okay, so it's really doing the formulas kind of um, in reverse. So let's take and see what we've got here. So we've got the same information we had before. Okay, so the mean consumption is 20.7 pounds. The standard deviation is 4.2. So let's figure out what they gave us. They want to know how much would someone have to eat. Okay, so they're really asking us for an x value um, in order to be in the top 10%. So as soon as I see that percentage, I draw my normal curve immediately and I figure out where to put it. Okay, so the, the key here is that it says the top 10%. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shade the top 10%. So let, if that's 10%, that means that that area is 0.10. Okay. If it was the bottom 10%, I would have shaded down below the mean. Okay, I'm definitely above the mean if I'm in the top 10%. Okay, think of it as being really the 90th percentile. Only 10% of people would eat more um, than you if you were at this point. So the first thing I do is if I'm, um, after I've drawn my curve, and I, if I shaded to the right, what I'm always going to do is kind of look at the corresponding, if that top area is 10%, then this area must be 0.9, okay? They mean the exact same thing. Having 90% to the left is the same thing as having 10% to the right. But the reason I always figure out the left-hand area is because that's how the tables and that's how this inverse norm works. Okay, so I would last week you learned how to do on the calculator using normal CDF, and this week you've seen in the weekly notes steps to do use this inverse norm. So it's under the same menu, so you're still going to go to second vars. Okay, vars is a key because you're trying to get up to distri distribution. Okay, that's why I'm doing the second. And after I do that, I'm going to go down to inverse norm. It's number three on um, most calculators. And then, um, so what I have to put in, so now I'm going to go, it's going to bring me to my home screen with the inverse norm in there. And I'm always going to put in the left area, and that's why that 0 .90 was important to me. The inverse norm always wants the left area. So if I put in 0.10, it's thinking I'm talking about the lowest 10% of the graph. So what this is going to give, if you press enter, what you're going to end up getting is an, this number, 1.28, and this is a z-score. Okay, so normal CDF, you put in z-scores, it gives you area. Inverse norm does the exact inverse. I put in area, and keep in mind this right here is an area and it gives me out a z-score. So what this is saying is if I want to be in the top 10% of amounts of ice cream consumed in a year, it means I have to be 1.28 standard deviations above the mean because it's positive. Sorry, that got so messy there. 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. That means this z-score right here is 1.28. So think about what that means. I have to be that many standard deviations above the mean. So I'm going to start getting into my x value now, but I'll, I'll give you the formula in a second, but you can't, a lot of times you don't even need it. So it's saying I have to be that 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. So let's start with our mean. And we want to be 1.28 of my standard deviations added to my mean because I want to be above. So this comes out to be about um, 26, if I round to the nearest tenth, it was 26.1 pounds. You'll have to kind of keep an eye on rounding on there, um, on what my stat lab wants you to round. 
but that's saying I need to consume 20, at least 26.1 pounds to be in the top 10% of ice cream consumption. So if you wanted a formula for this, you don't need it, but you'll, you'll see this in the book anyway. The formula would this for this would be, okay, to convert an X, or sorry, to take an area after you've figured out the Z-score and put it back into an X, you have your mean, which what that's what the 20.7 was, and then you're going to add your Z-score that you have to find times your standard deviation. And that will always convert it back. That is really just algebraically. We took the formula for Z-score and we just solved it for a different variable. We just solved it for X. That's all that is right there. And you, you can just use that all the time. You don't have to keep resolving for X. Okay, so hopefully that helps you this week with some of these um, problems where you're converting area into z-score into an x value. Um, you're going to see a lot of those in your homework this week. So just let me know if you have any questions. And you're also going to see it in your discussion coming up next. Have a good week.